at this point in my kids' culinary careers, I am always with them in the kitchen. No one is using a knife or turning on a stove without me. When your kids are ready for some unsupervised cooking, there are a whole nother set of rules that you want to introduce, but these are just the basics for supervised cooking. Number one, wash hands. This seems so basic, but you would be surprised how often your kids should be washing their hands, not only before they start cooking, but also during. If you look, you have to clean your hands, okay? <laughs> you wanna teach them that it prevents their germs from spreading to the entire family, and it also protects them. I'm ready to cook, look. Number two, knife safety. First, you wanna make sure that the counter is at waist level with the kids so they can see what they're cutting, and you can definitely use a stool if needed. Now, when your kids get older, they will learn proper knife grip technique, and I've actually showed my kids how to do it the correct way, but honestly, at this point, I am more concerned with just making sure they are totally safe. So as long as they're comfortable and they're not doing anything dangerous, like keeping their fingers too close to the blade, I don't interfere. Looks good. I figure that anything that's too awkward for them is more likely to result in mishaps. Avery and Brooks usually use a bear claw, curling their non-knife holding fingers under to hold what they're chopping and protect their fingertips. Sometimes they use a knife finger guard for extra protection and food should always be laid flat. Now in terms of what knives I use, Ryder really just uses a plastic eating utensil. Good, buddy. And I encourage him to not use his other hand by keeping it behind his back. Brooks is my most avid chef, so I actually got him a special set of knives last year for his birthday, along with a finger guard, and he's been getting a lot of confidence from using this, and I think he's about ready to graduate. Ooh, nice thin slice. Ryder, of course, wants to be just like his big brother, so he's been using that special knife to cut Play-Doh as practice. And finally, Avery is super cautious, and I actually trust her to use a real knife, but I am also always watching. Bear claw, bear claw, tuck him under, yes. Number three, clean as you go. This is both a health and a safety issue. My kids love to tell me that they will for sure clean their mess up later, but how likely is it that they'll actually remember there was raw egg on the counter or that, oops, someone spilled something on the floor? Number four, ask before you taste. It is so tempting to lick the spoon of the cookie dough batter. Mom, can I taste? <laughs> no, because there are raw eggs in here, right? Don't do it. Foodborne illnesses like salmonella are such a serious issue and so not worth it. Get your kids in the habit of asking before they taste. Can I lick this? No, that's flour. You don't lick flour. Also, for things that they are allowed to taste like pasta sauce, have them use a separate tasting spoon. This way they can learn to season to keep their germs from reaching others. How is it? Needs more salt. <laughs> And finally, number five, heat. Next to using a knife, seeing your kids turn on a stove is one of the most terrifying parts of cooking. I actually recently taught Brooks how to make scrambled eggs, including turning on the stove, though I'm always right there. Too high or okay? Looks a little high. He uses a pot holder for any handles, and he's also not allowed to cook anything that could possibly splatter. You also wanna make sure that turning off the stove is hammered home as a crucial safety tip. We all know how distracted kids can get when they're proud and hungry. Stop flossing and clean. All right guys, I hope these tips are ones you can implement in your own homes. And if you have additional ideas for keeping your kids safe in the kitchen, leave them for everyone in the comments below. Happy cooking and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Today's lesson, we are going to be doing a cooking activity 
make tuna pizza baguettes. Never heard of a tuna pizza baguette before? Me neither, until now. But this is what we're going to be doing today. So welcome to your host, Wayne Oliver, Jamie Oliver's cousin. <laughs> so the first step before we have our ingredients is to make sure first we wash our hands. This is very important, keeping our hands washed and clean before we put our hands on all the various different forms of foods. So that's what I'm about to do firstly. Now that you've washed your hands, we are ready to begin. You want to make sure that your oven is on and you need it at a temperature of 170 to 190 Celsius. The next thing I'm now going to do is move on to slicing the baguette that I have here on the board. So you want to make sure that with your knife that you are as careful as you can be when you are cutting through the bread. Now what I'm going to do here, as you can see, it's in lengthways. So what I'm preparing to do is to cut it down half, halfway across the bread. So, right, so what you want to do is cut halfway across the baguette. And voila. So now that I've cut my bread into half, what you're going to do now is to take the baguette and put them both onto the baking tray. And you want to have this baking in the oven for eight minutes as the first part of the process. Now, the reason why I've put oven gloves on my hands because I've just took the baking tray out of the oven, which has been really hot, so I don't want to burn my hands. Safety is important. So the next step is our peppers. As you can see, I have a red pepper and a green pepper. In fact, on our presentation, I've put some interesting facts about some of the ingredients that you're going to be using throughout this activity. It's well worth reading. I was quite fascinated with some of the things that I'd learned, particularly about peppers. So what you're going to do with the first pepper, I normally put both of my thumbs on top and I push down into the pepper, so just to split it in half. Now it doesn't matter if it all comes out in all different pieces, that's fine. Because what we're trying to do is to firstly get the stem out and clean out the inside of the pepper of all the seeds that are inside of it. So what I'm going to do, now be careful when you're using the knife. My advice would be to you is don't have the, the knife so close to your fingers, you want to give some space apart. So if I turn this upside down like that and just cut into it and just take your time as you're going through. So what I'm going to do is firstly make some strips. You can either do them thin or thick, that's fine. And as you can see in the inside of the pepper, we've still got some of the stem inside of there, so I'm just gonna cut that out. So now that you have prepared your pepper and you've made the slices, you took all the seeds out and cleaned out the stem inside. We're now gonna move on to the dicing of your peppers. So on my board, I've got a separation of green and red and this, I would prefer that you take your time when you're doing this. Try not to do it too fast. So what you could do, for example, is just take one of your sliced peppers and, if, and to dice it, to start off with, just make small, cuts across the pepper. Be careful about your fingers being close to the blade. That's why it's preferably good to do this with an adult. So as you can see, just, just want small cuts across. Now that you have prepared your peppers, our next step now is moving on to grating a block of cheese. So let me show you how that's done. So now I have in front of me my cheese grater and I've cut half a block of cheese. 
You could, if you wanted to, if you didn't want to use the cheese grater, you could just buy a bag of grated cheese. That would probably help speed up the process a bit more for you. But however, I decided that I wanted to go with grating a block of cheese. So here's my block, and here's the side of the cheese grater that I need. I would recommend that you're doing it on the various other sides. It will come out in a very, very small mess, and you won't get the quantity of cheese that you need. So make sure you use the bigger side of the cheese grater. And all you do is just press down the side on the side of it and go up and down with the cheese on the grater. And just to give you a quick little example, already I am getting the cheese that I need for my baguette. So now that you've grated your cheese, we are now going to mix the ingredients. So I have my cheese, I have my peppers. Inside here I have my sweet corn and I have my tuna prepared. Also, just going back to the presentation that we have put together for you, you will see some interesting facts about tuna. I hope that you might find that enjoyable. So now I'm gonna move on to mixing all the ingredients. So now that we have the ingredients, you, we are now going to just start adding our uh, things together inside of this bowl. Right, and there we have it. That's my bowl all prepared, ready for me to put onto the baguette. And that's the next part we're going to go to. We are now moving on to the baguettes. This is the final part. So you should have with you your tomato paste. And what I'm just going to do is squeeze, squirt it out and steady, just running it along in a single line like that. Then what I'm gonna do with your knife, just spread it all over the bread. Just as you would make in toast, it's as simple as that. So you just want to make sure you cover as much of the baguette as you can. If you need to use more paste, that's fine. So now that we have done the paste, we now move over to our mix. Just with a spoon, what you want to just do now is just, don't worry if you make a mess. That's why I've put everything now on the baking tray and I would suggest that you put foil underneath the baguette because the fact that you're gonna be putting extra cheese on top to get that melt whilst it's cooking, it, it's gonna get very messy. So to save you from the hardcore washing up of a baking tray, it's easier by having cooking foil underneath the baguette. So are you going to eat all of this wine to yourself? Uh, no chance. Um, <laughs> I will be, you'll have to roll me out of here if I was to eat all these myself, but definitely going to share this with staff that are in the building. Looks very nice. Very nice looking healthy dish and it looks very colourful on the eye. So now I'm just going to take the cheese. And as I said, you just want to make sure you've got some cheese left over. And just sprinkle it all over on top. have it. It looks like a very colourful mess but this will now go into the oven for 12 minutes.